Hey everyone, it's Kenji. Um, we're gonna make some pulled pork and then do some stuff with it. Indoor pulled pork. We're gonna do it in a Dutch oven and it's not gonna be the barbecue style of pulled pork, you know, just smoky. This is just gonna be uh, an oven pulled pork. So super simple and then we're gonna do a few different things with it. Um, so I've got this pork shoulder here. This is bone in. Um, this one's about 10 pounds. This is a relatively large one, but they, you know, this is called a Boston butt, which is the upper part of the, uh, the pork shoulder. Uh, they can run, you know, between five and 10 pounds. It depends on, uh, uh where you're getting it and, uh, et cetera. But, uh, this is about 10 pounds. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to rub it with a spice mixture. Um, this is, I make barbecue rub in kind of big batches. So this is a mixture, I'll put a recipe below, but this is a mixture of brown sugar, kosher salt, black pepper, uh, paprika, cayenne pepper, uh, cumin, coriander, fennel seed. Uh, there's some Mexican oregano in there. Um, maybe a couple other things I'm forgetting right now, but you know, you don't have to make your own spice mixture. You can use like a good quality, uh, pre-mixed spice blend. If you have, you know, if you have a favorite spice blend that you like to use from the supermarket, or if you've never used one, just go and pick one up. Um, I really like actually the spice blend from my buddy, uh, Meathead, who runs a, uh, website called amazingribs.com, which is sort of the, uh, the go-to source for, uh, barbecue tips, but he has a very good, uh, line of spice rubs, uh, that would do really well if you don't want to make your own. All right. So you see, I'm rubbing it very generously all over every side. You really want to make sure that you kind of rub it into, uh, all the sort of little cracks and crevices. Along these edges too. There. This is one of those things that, you know, it's extraordinarily economical because pork shoulder is, I don't know, depends where you live, I guess, but around me it's about $2 a pound, maybe $3 a pound, uh, you know, compared to say uh, a steak, which is $30 a pound. Um, but $2 a pound, pretty tough to beat that price. Um, and uh, pork shoulder is it's something you can, uh, you know, use in a huge variety of other dishes once it's done. But, all right, so I've got a Dutch oven on the stove top there. And I'm preheating. I'm gonna wash my hands in the meantime. Okay, this Dutch oven has been preheating, preheating over low heat for a while, but now it's up to a, I'm gonna turn it up to high heat to sear, okay? Just a little bit of oil in there, not much. And then we're gonna take this pork shoulder and we're gonna put it right in. I'm going to put it skin side down. Oop, that wasn't quite hot enough, but that's all right. Um, if you, for really, you know, if, if you're really searing like a steak or something that you're going to serve medium rare or chicken breast, you want that Dutch oven to be super, super hot at the bottom uh, so that you can develop a nice crust before the inside uh, starts to overcook. But for a pork shoulder, something we're going to braise where it's going to end up uh, cooking in there for a very long time anyway. Um, this, you know, this, the searing step, it doesn't matter if it takes a little bit of extra time to do that. Okay, I'm not going to bore you and make you watch this whole thing, but the thing to note here is that there's sugar in that spice rub, and sugar is going to speed up that browning process. So whereas normally it might take, say, 8 to 10 minutes per side uh, to sear a, a pork shoulder like this if it didn't have any sugar in it, in this case it's probably going to take about five to ten minutes total for every side so just a couple minutes per side um, i will speed up that process so you don't have to watch through it uh, so here we go here is the speed it up pork stirring process Oh, I'm using a bone in pork shoulder here so you can see the, the uh, bone there. But you can also use a, bone, a boneless pork shoulder if you prefer. Um, 
And uh, yeah, you know, the bone, the, the reason you have the bone is because, um, well, first of all, it's cheaper when you buy it with the bone in because there's less labor that goes into it. But um, I also like, often like having that bone there because once we're done cooking this, we can uh, take that bone out and use it uh, to flavor other things. So we're not gonna waste any of this. Um, all right. All right, and there we are, seared on all sides. Um, basically, just to develop a little bit of extra flavor, you honestly don't really have to do the searing if you don't feel like it. You will still develop plenty of flavor through its slow cooking in the oven. I'm gonna take a little bit of whiskey now. Um, this is just for fun. You know, if, so if you were really committing to like a full, you know, a sort of Kansas City style barbecue flavor, you could take your favorite Kansas City style barbecue sauce and add it to this pan now and braise it in there and then shred it up in there. Um, but I wanna be able to, use this pork for a number of other different dishes. So I will do pull, pulled pork, but I'll use that pulled pork in a bunch of different dishes. Uh, so I wanna make sure that it's sort of a versatile ingredient, which means that I'm gonna keep the flavor profile relatively simple. So it has that spice rub on there, but I'm not gonna add any sauce. Um, I am gonna add a little bit of whiskey. Just because I like that flavor. If we want, we can light it on fire. Who knows if my GoPro will catch on fire? Probably. Get that out of there, huh? Alcohol flames are pretty, uh, not that hot, so <laughs> luckily. All right, we'll let that fire burn down. Oh, I missed the battery on my overhead lights. You can use, you know, the cheapest whiskey you have is fine. This is tin, tin cup, which is a pretty inexpensive whiskey. I think it's like, around here, it's like 28 bucks a bottle. It's all right. Okay, so that's basically it. I'm gonna pop the lid on here. We're gonna go into a 300 degree oven. And you know, for, for say something that's like five to seven pounds, I would probably go about four hours in here with the lid on. Um, but given that this one's about 10 pounds, I'll probably go a little bit longer. Um, but either way, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cook it until uh, I can stick a skewer in it, not with zero resistance, but with a little bit of resistance. So that will take about, about, I don't know, four hours, maybe, actually no, I think more like five hours, maybe a little more, it's been a while, but nice thing about pork shoulders, it's very, very forgiving, so it's very hard to overcook it. All right, let's see where we're at. I think we're looking good. All right, so you can see it started, it's pulled away from the bone here, right? And if I move this bone around, it kind of easily slides in and out. That means we're done. I want to put a knife through very little resistance. All right, so now all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let some crust develop here, some bark. So I'm gonna leave it uncovered probably for another 45 minutes or so uh, to an hour. All right, and I will see you in about an hour, a little bit longer. I had to go pick up my daughter uh, from school. But here we are. Oof. Oh, so one interesting thing to note, you saw um, when I pulled it out earlier and pulled the lid off, the liquid was boiling. Whereas now it's not, um, and that's because uh, pots that are covered actually um, heat up more inside than pots that are uncovered because uh, you know, the evaporation of liquid draws energy from the pot. And so um, in a 300 degree oven or even a 275 degree oven, an uncovered pot probably won't boil, um, whereas a covered pot will. Um, anyhow, yeah, so we're done. We got this little crust going. This bone should pop right out. There we go. I'll keep that. Um, and now basically I'm gonna let this cool in its own liquid, um, but I'm gonna shred some up. Get a couple forks, give it a taste. This should shred super, super easily. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm gonna roughly shred it and kinda mix it into its 
juices a bit. That's about all I'm gonna do right now. I just, just wanna shred it enough that I can get it, submerge it in those juices, or at least mostly submerge it in those juices uh, so I can let it cool without drying out. In the meantime, we'll taste some. I'll probably mix some of this into the kid, uh, my daughter and her friend asked for quesadillas today, so I'll probably mix some of this into their quesadillas. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'm on. Here you go. Oops. <laughs> Got some on your back there, bud. All right. Um, so I'll be back. I'm going to show you, this video is going to go on. I'm going to show you a few different things I'm going to make with this, um, but those things aren't today. So um, yeah, I will see you. Hey there. So what I decided to do was instead of uh, make this all one big video, what I'll do is um, I'll make a series of smaller videos. So if you watch this video the day it comes out over the course of the next uh, few days, you'll see a bunch of different recipes coming up that use this leftover pulled pork uh, in a variety of dishes. So stay tuned for that. Or if you're watching it uh, in the future, you know, uh, just look back and find all the other parts of this. Uh, so I'll be making some pasta, I'll be making sandwiches, I'll be making tacos, um, all kinds of stuff with this pulled pork shoulder. All right, guys, gals, non-binary pals, I will see you uh, tomorrow. Bye.